Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about the veins of our torso model here, okay? So let's get started. We're going to start with the legs and work our way up first, okay? So if you look over here, you're going to see this vein right here running up here. This right here is called the Great Saphenous Vein. Okay, so it's called the Great Saphenous. Then you're going to see these veins over here feeding into this, and this is actually going to be, this one over here, is called the Lateral Circumflex Femoral Vein. And this one over here is going to be called the medial circumflex femoral vein. Okay, so again, great saphenous, lateral circumflex femoral, and medial circumflex femoral. This is on the left side of the leg, right? So if we come over here, it would be on the right side, but again, they took a chunk out of this, so we're not going to see it. But if you see right here, we have another vein, and this vein right here is going to be called the femoral vein. All right, so you have a little chunk of that vein right there called the femoral vein. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work our way up on the left side of the abdomen. We got a couple of these veins that can be affected by, um, there's a condition uh, called hepatic portal hypertension, which is common in people who have like cirrhosis, where the blood flow going through the liver is obstructed and some of the blood flow back uh, moves backwards and some of them can move into these veins here and cause this torturous dilating structures on the abdomen called caput medusa. And if you look here, there's one of these veins coming up here. So this one right here is called the superficial epigastric vein. Okay, so this vein right here is called the superficial epigastric vein. And then there's some branches called the paraumbilical branches here. But one of the big ones is if we follow this up here, kind of this one right here, it goes up and feeds into the axillary vein. And this bad boy right there is called the thoracoepigastric vein. Okay, so just again, superficial epigastric, paraumbilical branches, and this one right here that'll feed into the axillary vein is called the thoracoepigastric vein. All right, now, Let's come over here to the right side of the guy's arm. Obviously, they chucked off a piece of his arm, so he's just got a nub. But we're just going to see here two important veins. So if you look, we have this vein right here. And this vein right here at the end is called the basilic vein. Okay, so this vein right here at the end is called the basilic vein. Now, the next vein here going towards the armpit, if you see here, this next vein going into the armpit, it's called the axillary vein. So we have two veins here. One right here, this end point here is called the basilic vein. And this one part here is called the axillary vein. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the left side here because we have another vein on this guy. This is his little nub over here. And it's this vein running up over. This sometimes is so big in different types of bodybuilders, right? You can see it, this vein a lot. And this right here is called the cephalic vein. Okay, so this is called the cephalic vein. So you get the cephalic vein right there. All right, couple other structures that we'll hit just because they can be visible here is we'll hit this vein right here. So if you see here in the neck, you're going to have this vein right here. And this is actually, since it's on the right side, this will be the right internal jugular vein. Okay, so it's called the right internal jugular vein. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this a little bit here. And we have a couple other veins over here that we should take a look at. If we look, we have this vein running right over the sternocleidomastoid here. And this vein right here is called the external jugular vein. Okay, So we have the external jugular vein right there. If you look, we have a couple veins that are going to be draining from the uh, upper head structure right here. You're going to see this one right here. This is actually called the facial vein. So we have the facial vein right here. Then over here, we have another one draining the temple. And this one is called the superficial temporal vein. We have the superficial temporal vein and the facial vein. If I turn a little bit more, we have another one here. And it's going to be draining from the occiput, right? So from the back of the head, the occipital region. So they call this the occipital vein. So you have the occipital vein, the superficial temporal vein, and the facial vein. And then again, you have the external jugular vein. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this guy back into this position, and we're going to take the chest plate off and go on to the next level. 
All right, guys, so we just took off the chest plate, so this is the view we're going to have now. And all we're going to do is we're going to hit some of these other uh, vessels before we go into the thoracic cavity. So if you look here, again, we had that cephalic vein right there. And then what happens is the cephalic vein actually drains into the axillary vein, and then the axillary vein feeds into this structure right here, which is called the subclavian vein. Remember, the subclavian vein gets blood from the external jugular vein, and it's going to get it from the internal jugular vein. And if you remember, it also gets it from the vertebral veins as well. Anyway, that actual right there, that uh, subclavian vein, will join with the internal jugular vein and make this right here, which is called the brachiocephalic vein. Since this is the left side, left subclavian, left internal jugular, will specifically form the left brachiocephalic. And just a little side there, if you can actually see that right there, that little green structure there, that is actually called the thoracic duct. That's actually a lymphatic vessel that empties right in there to where like the junction of the uh, left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. I just thought that was pretty cool. All right, anyway, we have coming down here, this right here, this continuation here is the right internal jugular vein. We saw that part. And this is our right subclavian. It's going to fuse to form the right brachiocephalic vein. When the brachiocephalics come together, you can see this little trunk right here, and that is called the superior vena cava. And that's the one that empties into the right atrium. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lungs off so that we can see some of the vessels in here. All right, yeah, we, we don't need the liver anyway. All right, so now what we're doing is we just remove the lungs so that we can see in the thoracic cavity. We're going to look at some of the veins in this area too. So if you look here, uh, we're going to have the ribs, right? But this is the posterior part of the ribs going to the vertebral column. And we have a vein right here that's running in between the ribs. So they call this an intercostal vein. But since it's actually in the posterior part and it's on the left side, this is the left posterior intercostal vein. There's other veins that are running up through here, this guy right here particularly. It actually gains, uh, it's fed by what's called the hemiozygous vein, which runs up through the abdomen. And that hemiozygous vein feeds into this structure here called the accessory hemiozygous vein. So this vein right here is called the accessory hemiozygous vein. Now, what I want to do real quick is I want to kind of show you guys another view because this is the posterior part. I'm going to bring the chest plate over for a second so that we can see the anterior view um, of the intercostal veins. All right, so just this is going to be the anterior view of the chest plate, okay? So I just took, remember we took the chest plate off to look inside of the thoracic cavity, and this is just looking at the anterior internal view um, of the chest plate. So you have, remember, these are our ribs right here. So this is the anterior part of the rib because it's going to attach to the sternum or via the coastal cartilage. But there's veins right here that are running in between the ribs. And this one right here is called the anterior intercostal vein. And again, this would be the left side, this would be the right side. So again, this would be the left anterior intercostal vein. If you want to throw another one in there, there's another vein that's actually running down this way, linearly or longitudinally, this guy right here. And this one right here is called the internal thoracic vein or the mammary vein. Okay, so we have the anterior intercostal veins and we have the internal thoracic or mammary veins. All right, so the next thing I want to hit is uh, the pulmonary vessels. Now, this sometimes throws people for a doozy, but it shouldn't. And the reason why is the blood that's going to the lungs is coming from the right side of the heart. And the right side of the heart is primarily deoxygenated blood. It's being returned from the systemic circulation of the coronary. So they're going to the lungs to get oxygenated. So remember, 215, it might, people might say, oh, it's blue, so it's a vein. But that is not true. 215 is your pulmonary artery, okay? So this is, for example, this is the right side, that's the left side. So this is the right pulmonary artery. After it undergoes oxygenation inside of the, around the alveoli via the pulmonary capillaries, it'll come back as oxygenated blood via 217, these red vessels here, which is called your pulmonary vein. So this is your right pulmonary vein. And then again, they'll come from the left side too, left pulmonary veins, and these will empty into specifically the left atrium of the heart. Okay, so that covers the thoracic vessels. Now we're gonna work our way down here into the abdomen. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the inserts on our way through the abdominal cavity. So let's go ahead and take this liver out so we can take a look at one of these vessels, the two of these vessels here. Um, and one is a really, really important one. 
um, and we'll talk about it more in GI, but it's this right here. It's called the, uh, the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein is really interesting because it takes blood from the actual GI tract and takes it to the liver to be processed. And then from that, after it's processed, it goes into this big, big vessel right here called the inferior vena cava. So what's really important that I want you guys to remember is the hepatic portal vein is bringing blood uh, via like the inferior mesenteric vein, superior mesenteric vein, the gastric veins, the splenic veins, and all that's coming from the GI tract and then it's gonna be going into the liver to be processed, and then from that, it'll eventually go into the uh, inferior vena cava. All right, so that covers the liver. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the veins here on the intestinal insert. So these are very, very important vessels here because remember, they feed into the hepatic portal system. All right, so if you look here, 314 uh, there, um, this is actually going to be the superior mesenteric vein. If you remember, it actually uh, picks up blood from the ileocolic vein, the right colic, and even the middle colic vein. Um, then after that, and even the intestinal veins as well, okay? This one over here is the inferior mesenteric vein. And if you remember, this one's gonna pick up blood over here via the left colic and also through the uh, superior rectal vein and even the sigmoidal veins too, okay? But remember, two big veins here, superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, their importance is specifically with taking blood and feeding it into the hepatic portal system. All right, so all I did here, just I, there was one more vessel that I wanted to hit, so I, I flipped the intestinal insert around here. Um, and so now we're looking at the back of the intestinal inserts, because here's like, this is your intestinal mesenteries right here. But you have right here another vein, and this is gonna be coming from the spleen, now again, Remember the orientation, this is actually going to be the left side, this is going to be the right side, okay? So in other words, this is the descending colon, this is the ascending colon. All I did was flip the intestinal insert around. So this right here is called the splenic vein, meaning it's going to be taking blood from the spleen, which is coming from the left side of the body. This right there, just continuing, it was in the anterior view, this right here is called the superior mesenteric vein. Remember I told you that there was the superior mesenteric vein, the inferior mesenteric vein, the splenic vein, there's also another one called the gastric vein. They empty into this structure here called the hepatic portal vein, which feeds into the liver, okay? All right, so that covers the intestinal insert. Now let's go ahead and focus on the posterior uh, vessels on the abdominal wall. All right, so now we're gonna look at some of these vessels on the uh, posterior abdominal wall. So if you look here, we're gonna start from the bottom, work our way up. Okay, started from the bottom, now we're here. All right, so we got this guy right here, and this is gonna be, and remember, this is the right side, this is the left side. This right here is gonna be the right external iliac vein. If you remember, it got fed by the femoral vein. Okay, so femoral vein feeds into the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein and the internal iliac vein come together to form what's called the common iliac vein. So remember, here's your internal iliac vein, this is your common iliac vein. This is the external iliac vein. Okay, so again, external iliac vein, internal iliac vein, common iliac vein. Then what happens is the common iliac veins, here's the right common iliac, this is the left common iliac, they will come together and make this big old bugger right here, and this is gonna be called the inferior vena cava. Okay, so a quick recap, external iliac vein, internal iliac vein, Common iliac vein, this is the right one, this is the left one. They'll come together and make the inferior vena cava. Then, the next thing here is you have some vessels that are gonna be returning blood from the gonads, from the ovaries and the testes. So here's the right gonadal vein, and then there's another one coming this way. So if I follow it from here, coming up, coming up, coming up, and then feeding in, this is going to be the left gonadal vein. So two gonadal veins, right, left. Okay, next we have blood coming and being drained from the kidney. So this is going to be the renal vein. But again, it's on the right side, so this is the right renal vein. Over here, the, the kidney would be sitting right here. So this would be the left renal vein. Then these are your adrenal glands or your super renal glands, these yellow little pouches here. And again, this vein here, which is draining the adrenal gland or the suprarenal glands is gonna be called the, you can take two names, whichever one you like. This is the uh, left suprarenal vein or the left adrenal vein, whichever you prefer. 
All right, and then one more vein is this guy right here. It's going to be draining blood from the diaphragm. And this guy right here is called the inferior phrenic vein. Okay? So that covers all the vessels of the posterior abdominal wall. All right, engineers, so in this video, we covered all the veins um, on our buddy little torso here. So I hope all of it made sense. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you learned a lot. If you guys did, please hit that like button. Comment down in the comment section. Please subscribe. If you guys get a chance, go check out our Facebook, our Instagram, and even our Patreon account. If you guys have an opportunity to donate, it would, we would truly appreciate it. All right, guys, as always, until next time.